Okay. And so on your windows, you should be able to see that we do have um, the recording uh, uh, going on right now. Okay. So with that said, let me share my screen. And uh, let me share with you the information here. All right. <clears throat> so So let me start you with uh, composite functions. I, I hope you remember these. Um, in this chapter, we're in section 4.3 of the chapter, by the way. This is all about the chain rule. So if you recall, I did talk about quotient and product rules. So I will mention those again, and those are part of this. So when we get to there, I will refresh your memory. But today, it's all about the chain rule. And so, so there are... Uh, sections that you really need to pay attention to. So first thing I'm going to start with is what is the composition of a function? You guys remember back in algebra where you did, so for example, f of g of x, do you remember that? Where you have a function within a function? Yes. All right. So what they do is they start you in an example one um, in the textbook for this section. And so in example one, they ask you to evaluate composition functions. And so uh, what they do is they give you, um, in this case, they start you with f of x And they tell you that f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. And they give you g of x. And they tell you g of x is the square root of 3x plus 5. And then they're asking us here in part A, they're saying, can you evaluate f? or g of f of four. So when they ask you to evaluate g of f of four, what I want you to do is start with f of four. So we're gonna say instead of f of x, we're gonna call it f of four. And that's basically equal to two times four minus one, which is equal to seven. And so in essence, what they're asking you to do is g of f of 4 is really g of 7. And if you're going to use this notation, then that means that we're going to do the square root of 3 times 7 plus 5. And our final answer here sounds like it's going to be the square root of 26. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a basic foundation concept in algebra, but it's part of a foundation concept here in calculus with respect to chain rule. And you're going to see why. I'll do example B for the sake of uh, refreshing your memory as well. What if we do G of F, F of G of 4? And so in this example, we begin with, well, what is G of 4? In our example, that is the square root of 3 times 4 plus 5, which is, in essence, the square root of 17. So what we really have here is the f of the square root of 17. So if we take our function for f, f of x, this will be 2 times square root of 17 minus 1. And... I would assume we could leave it like this because they're not asking us to go any further. In part C, they're asking us in this case to find the f of g of negative 2. So I want you to stop and think about this one. And the reason why I say that is if you do g of negative 2, we know that in terms of the function, this is the square root of 3 times negative 2 
and this will be plus 5. And this results in an imaginary number. So this is square root negative 1. So what we say in this, in this case is that the f of g of negative 2 does not exist. D and E. So you may have questions that will um, involve you having to evaluate, in this case, whether or not it's possible. So like in this case, it's not. OK. Do you feel as a class uh, overall, do, do you all feel confident with this or not? I just need to know, because I can do a few more examples, um, which I actually think I'm going to. Uh, let me do let me do example two anyway. I think that'll help you just in case. Okay, so in example two, we're still looking at the composition of functions. Now the issue with this one is they're saying you they're asking you to let the value of f of x equal to two x squared plus five x. They're asking you then to also look at g of x, and in that case, that is 4x plus 1. In part a, they're asking us, us to find the f of g of x. And so in this case, uh, remember, this is 2x squared plus 5x. So this will be, if you think of it this way, 2x squared plus five, and this will be your x. So the reason I do that is I want you to remember this is the four x plus one, which goes in here. Okay, so this part is your four x plus one. In essence, this is your g of x. OK, so when we do this, we FOIL. Remember FOIL, we have to FOIL this part here. So you end up with 2 parentheses 16 x squared plus 8x plus 1. And this is plus 5 uh, times 4x plus 1. I can just skip a step. I'll tell you that this is just 20 x plus 5. So far, so good? You're good with the FOIL? Yep. OK, so if I distribute the 2, I now have 32x squared plus the 16x plus the 2, and then obviously plus the 20x plus the 5. And if I look and group like symbols, this is my only x squared. So this will be 32x squared. This right here is my plus 36x. And lastly, my plus 7. Was that OK for you, I hope? Yeah. OK. Let's do example B just to practice some more. Example B, we have a g of f of x. And by the way, you do know that they, if they are inverse function, your ultimate value, once you do the composite, you end up with x, right? That's a hint, hint. Keep that in mind. OK, so in this case, we have, um, given our values, we have 4 parentheses the 2x squared plus the 5x plus the 1. And if I distribute that 4, I end up with 8x squared plus 20x plus 1. They're not asking us to do anything else. They're, this is all they're asking us to do, so we can stop there. OK, example 3 is more of the same. 
So let's look at example three. So if I'm looking at part A, for example, three, this is a little bit of overkill of these, but this one is a little different. I'll just do this. Um, they're asking us to write each function as a composition. of two functions. And then they're giving us the following. They're giving us um, h of x, and that is equal to two parentheses for x plus, plus one squared plus five parentheses for x plus one. If you think about it, you can think of one of them as f of x, and that would be what I would con consider your shell, which I'm thinking if I am looking at this part here as x and this part here as x, or g of x, I can think of the whole thing as 2x squared plus 5x. I can then look at my g of x function and say, well, the g of x must be the inside part, which is the 4x plus 1, which in this case is simply right here. It's, if you notice, this is the same as this. So I'm looking at them as x values. Pretty simple? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got it. Good. Now, in example four, um, they have a word problem, which I'm going to do with you as well. But let me see what our time is when I'm done with this, because I'm about to hit chain rule, and chain rule is a lot. Um, so let me start with example five and we will go back to example four. In essence, you're going to use the same process. You'll see. So this is all about the chain rule. The chain rule is another way of doing derivatives or finding derivatives when you have composite functions. For example, in this case, they're asking us to find the derivative, so they call it dy over dx. And they're saying that is, what is the derivative if y is equal to parentheses 3x squared minus 5x, and this is all raised to the 1 half power. And so what I want you to take away from this is that they start us by looking at the u part as the inside part. All of this in yellow that you see here. I want you to think of this as u, which is 3x squared minus 5x. u can also have a derivative, which in this case, you learn how to do differentiation. And this is simply 6x minus 5. We also denote this as du over dx. Now, just like I mentioned last in the last example, that the, this there's there is a shell function. Like in other words, this right here with a parentheses, let me just do parentheses, all this raised to the one half power is a shell function. We can refer to that as dy over du, which in this case is equal to one half parentheses u, remember you take away one, so that becomes negative one half. Do you remember that from last week? 
Or if I gave you an example and I said to you, hey, I have uh, 3x raised to the fifth, the first derivative is 15x to the fourth, right? Because you take away one from the exponent after you multiply. So you multiply and take away one. Remember that one? Those examples? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So that, if you notice, I've done two derivatives at this point to start this problem. So one of them is I went uh, dy over du because that'll give me the shell. And then I did the derivative of du over dx. So you have two derivatives. And so they are referring to the dy over dx as being equal to the dy over du times du over dx. Now, what I need you to take from this is this notation. Okay, so look at your problem again. We're at 3x squared minus 5x raised to the 1 half. We're taking is derivative. In essence, since we're multiplying 1 half times the u, and we end up with a negative 1 half exponent, we have to re-express this, don't we, as 1 over 2, and now you have the u to the positive 1 half, so we're okay. Now, I also want you to consider that, given this expression, this is going to become 1 over 2. This is times 3x squared minus 5x, again, all this to the negative 1 half. And this is times the derivative of this, which is in essence six, um, 6x six minus five based on what we got up there. You remember here? Now, if I re-express this even further, my final answer, since it's one times six x minus five, I end up with six x minus five over the two, and this is times the three x squared minus 5x to the positive 1 half. So it's a couple of steps, but it's not really that ginormous. Now, I took my time. I stretched it out so you can see all the steps. But honestly, this is not that convoluted. So one more time, if you think about the big picture, let's look at it again just to make sure you understand. The first thing I did was I multiplied one half in front of here. So now I have one half parentheses three X squared minus five X. And I took away one, which is the negative two over two, right? Cause that's equivalent to one, which is where I get the negative one half. In the next step, I want you to remember that I multiply by the derivative of U which in this case is the 6x minus 5. Now, if I rewrite this entire expression, this is how I end up over here. Okay? So that's the, the quickie or the bigger picture of how this, what this works. I have plenty more examples, so hang tight. Let's do the next one. So I am going to ask you to do a, one more similar question which is uh, example six. And this one is asking us to find the first derivative of x squared plus five x. And this is raised to the eighth power. So if we do this uh, relatively in one swoop, this will be eight parentheses x squared plus five x. And this will be raised to the seventh power and that times the derivative of u, which is gonna give me two x plus five. And technically, usually in calculus, we don't take this further because I imagine the seventh power is a long 
a very long uh, expression. So we leave the question there or the answer there. What's going through your minds? Are we okay? Are we seeing the big picture? Yeah. Yeah. You want another one of those? Yes. Okay, let's try another one. I'll, this is good practice. I'll do it in red. So I want you to find the derivative of x squared minus 7. And we're going to raise this to the 10th power. Are you getting 10 parentheses x squared minus 7 to the 9th times 2x? Yes. If that's what you got, you're good. Golden. OK. Example 7 is really no different. In example 7, it's more practice, so hang tight. They're going to give you where y is equal to 5x squared plus 3x minus 4. And this is raised to the 10th power as well. So in the same, same fashion, this is 10 parentheses 5x squared plus 3x minus 4. All this is raised to the ninth power. And this is times the, the, the derivative of this, which is um, 10x plus 3. Is that easy? Yeah. And you, do you see that the, it is a composition of functions? Oh. You're not feeling that one? The last two, I, I, I'm completely lost. This one up here, the red one? Correct. Okay, so follow my lead. Follow my lead on this. Do you notice that this 10 is now over here? Yeah. So we're, in essence, multiplying, right? 1 times that is 10, and we're taking away 1. Do you notice that that's here? Yes. This is the same number here, right? And this yeah. value is simply the derivative of this. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I see it. Okay. Now look at this one. This is no different. Do you look at it for a minute and tell me if you see it? Uh, Again, oh, you yeah. start with 10. You multiply by 10. So 10 times all of that. Take away one, we're back here. And now take the derivative of this, that's this piece. Okay, yeah, I see it now. Oh, good, good, good. All right, so um, in example seven, I have a couple of other examples I'm gonna throw your way. So this is example 7b, and I want you to look at the question. It says, find the derivative. And again, they can ask you with the notation or like this. And they're giving us h of x, and they're telling us that that is the square root of 7x minus 8x the, uh, squared. OK. In a question like this, the first thing I want you to think about is this part is all the inside of the question, right? So all of that part is really being raised, the 7x minus the 8x squared, that is all being raised to the 1 half power. Are we clear on that? Yes. Because anything to the 1 half power is really 
being taken, the square roots being taken, right? So if that were one third, that would be the cube root of something, right? That's right. All right. So first thing I would say is rewrite it like this. So I just have done that. I got, took care of the square root. And now we're going to do the whole process of the power rule as part of the chain rule. So it will multiply by one half. So this is basically one half. Parentheses 7x minus 8x squared. And this is one half minus one, which is really minus two over two. So this is really negative one half, right? Times the derivative of this uh, part of the fu uh, function. So you should have seven minus 16x. So far so good. Did I lose anybody anywhere? No, that makes sense. Okay. okay. Um, could, could you? I, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but but I, could you explain? Uh, so when we're finding the derivative, that what does that mean exactly? Where here or here? Yeah, like that means that the end this times that is equal to okay. the beginning, or is that not what it means? It we're still working this, so we're still working the whole thing. It's just we have to take cer certain steps to be able to get the chain undone in a sense. All right. And so by following these steps, we we do so. So we end up with the seven minus 16 X in the numerator, because that times one is itself, right? So this times this over, and then the two is in the bottom. If I bring this down as a, the exponent will change to a positive. So I have seven X minus eight X squared. And this is raised to the positive one half. Another way I can express this, I could also call this seven minus 16 X over two times the square root of seven X minus the eight X squared. Okay, so who had a question that got cut off? I I saw what um wasn't connecting. Okay, so you're okay. I think so. Okay. Um I have another one similar to this that we can look at. Just follow the steps. If you listen to me again, maybe watch this a second time, just that example, maybe it'll stick a little start stronger. And so this one, they give you 7 over x squared minus 9 to the fifth power. So what do you think should happen? Well, I think you want to get that exponent in the denominator up to the numerator. Yes, I would bring that up, and this is now 7 parentheses x squared minus 9 raised to the negative fifth. Because remember, this is now over 1. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Now, our next step is we're going to multiply by this lovely number, 7 times negative uh, 5 times this we're going to take away one and then now we're going to multiply this times the derivative of the x squared minus nine and so that'll become 2x okay now if i collapse this what i have is negative 35 times x squared minus 9 to the negative 6 times the 2x. And if I distribute yet again, so I'll go ahead and I'll multiply this times this, I get negative 70x 
times x squared minus 9 to the negative 6. But we don't like those exponents to be negative. So we want to drop this down even yet again. So I get 70x. And this is over x squared minus 9 to the positive 6. So just take a moment. Take a moment. Look at it. Make sense of it. The numerator is still negative, right? The negative, it's still negative 70x, right? Did it not write? No, that put, I should have put the negative here. Yeah, you can put, leave it there. Okay. All right. So tell me if I lost you or do you see what the big picture is? Remember, this is the derivative. Let me do it in yellow. This is the derivative. This 2x is the derivative of this. So if I take the derivative, that's what this is here. And all I did here was a multiplied. I multiplied. So I multiplied it all together. So you'll see questions like this on my math lab. So I don't want you to get like. <clears throat> taken aback. OK, are we OK so far? Yeah. Yeah. OK, I want to talk to you now about the product rule and how that applies. So we're looking at product rule. And the general power rule. So in this one, the question reads, this is example eight in case you're following the number examples. This says find the derivative. And again, remember the derivative is helping you evaluate the rate of change in a particular point, just like it did on a, on a project. So find the derivative of, and they're giving you y equals 4x times 3x plus 5. And this is to the fifth power. So as we look at a question like this, remember product rule. And the product rule, if you recall the steps, we're looking at the first derivative of the power rule. Basically, if you have a function u of x, let's call this u of x divided or times v of x, it's u of x times the derivative of v of x plus v of x as a function times the derivative of u of x, if you remember that. And I walked you through that with a few, um, few extra steps to help you remember how to set it up. So anyway, having said that, we're going to begin with the 4x. And we're going to express this as a product of 4x times 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. So obviously, we're going to need to find a derivative of the powered uh, term, which is our, our v of x. And so we end up here with our u of x. So this will be, in this case, 4x, this would be times the derivative, which will be 5 parentheses 3x plus 5 to the fourth power and times the derivative of the function itself, which is 3. That's the first part of the, po the product rule. Plus, we're going to use that v of x formula, which is 3x plus 5 to the fifth. 
And we're multiplying that times the derivative of our u of x, which is our case 4x, which is just times 4. Does that make sense thus far? Um, no. <clears throat> okay. Um, think, of, uh, think of this as u of x, and think of this as v of x. And so in our function, you have to have u of x and its derivative for the power rule, right? And so in this case, if this is 4x, its derivative is 4. Would we agree? Yeah. Okay. If we look at v of x, and I said to you v of x, well, that's 3x plus 5, and this is raised to the fifth then let's find the derivative of that v of x, which is where we use the five, bring the five forward. This becomes five. This is the chain rule. Five times the three x plus five. Five minus one is four. And then we multiply by the derivative of this, which is just what? Three. And if you recall, in the product, Wait. what happened? Uh, where is um, I can highlight it for you. Maybe that'll help you. If you see that this is V of X. 4X is not part of that. 4X is right here in the front. So if I do 4x in pink, so let's say this is the u of x. Remember the formula says u of x goes first, which is in our case right here. This is the derivative of u of x, which is four. Does it matter which uh, letters you use? Is that a matter of significance? What do you mean, like the x, the variable? Yeah, like the u and the v. Is that like meaning well, something? You could call it. You can call it anything as long as you're consistent. Okay. As long as you're consistent, just remember that this this is the u of x, and uh, let's do it in red. Nah, let's do it in green. This green is the v of x. And so you have your u of x, your v of x, but you also have to, to have the derivatives. So these are the two derivatives. And if you really follow the power rule the way I'm showing you, it's basically this times this plus the other part, which is the, the u, u prime x times the v of x, which is what's expressed right here. Okay, I'm going to continue here. In the next step, I want you to notice that um, I'm going to multiply uh, the 4 times 5, which is 20x, and then that times 3. So all that multiplied is 60x times the 3x plus 5 to the 4th plus the four times the three X plus five to the fifth. If I take out a common denominator, which in this case does exist, it's four times 15 is 60. Let me go and switch my marker here. So if I take out the four parentheses, if I take out the three X, plus five, and I can take out the lowest power, which I do, this will then simplify to 15, because 15 times four is 60. So if I make this 15x, then 15x times four is 60x. And then since I already used the three x plus five to the fourth, this is gonna be plus three x plus five 
to the first power, which will complete the fifth power up here. And that's what I have right now. And this does simplify further because I can combine these two, this one and this one. So this will be four parentheses, three X plus five to the fourth power. This becomes 18 X plus five. This definitely is, you know, quite a few steps. And um, that's just example eight. All right, do you want to try one on your own? Yeah. See, if, see if you got this? Okay. Do me a favor, because I have to remove this picture from the screen. But take a picture of it with your phone real quick, if you don't mind. And I'm going to switch pages and give you another one. So I'm ready to, to do so, if you're ready. Ready. Awesome. OK, so let's try this one. I want you to find. the derivative. And we'll do this step by step. I'll give you a chance because I, I don't want you to get frustrated, which is my number one concern. Uh, <clears throat> so if I give you the derivative, the derivative of x, y equals x squared, and then this is times 5x minus 1, and this is to the third power. So I'll give you, say, until you say so, uh, I'm going to go with five minutes, okay? Yep. All right, see how you do. Like I said, I want you, I do not want to see you get, anybody get frustrated, so. Say so one of any of you got it as soon as you do. By the way, I know some of you came in a little later than when we started, and I did mention that if you haven't finished a project, you still have a window of opportunity. I'll give you a few more days to get it done and turn it in. So please don't waste that opportunity that I'm giving you, because from here on, it's skyrocket.
Okay, just in case, I assume you're starting with x squared times, and then you have the 5x minus 1 cubed as the way to write it. Now, uh, if I implement the power rule in this case, we're going to have the u. So if I do this here, the u of x is equivalent to my x squared. The u prime, or the first derivative, is the equivalent of 2x. My v of x is equivalent to 5x minus 1 cubed my v prime, my first derivative, is going to be 3 parentheses 5x minus 1, that's going to be squared, times the derivative of 5x minus 1, which is simply 5. Are you ready to implement the power rule? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to assume we're going to start with u of x. And this is going to be times 3 parentheses 5x minus 1 squared times 5. And according to this, this is plus the original 5x minus 1 cubed. And this is times x uh, 2x in this case. So far, so good? Yes. OK, so if I do 5 times 3 times x squared, I get 15x squared times the 5x minus 1 squared plus I have a 2x and I have a 5x minus 1 cubed. Can you tell me what you think the common term is? What well, looks similar to both? Hint, hint. So if I take out, in this case, Let's take out what's common, which in this case is going to be the 5x minus 1 squared. What's left in here? Well, I could take out an x, at least 1x, right? This is going to leave me with 15x for this part, right? If I take out an x, that'll leave me 15x, and this will be plus 2 times 5x minus 1. Done. I could then distribute this, right, in here. So I have 15x plus 10x minus 2. And that, that reduces to 25x minus 2, right? So I have x parentheses 5x minus 1 squared. And in here, I have 25x minus 2. And you can leave it like that if you wish, according to this. <clears throat> so how many of you got it? You feel comfortable? Um, no. It's a long process, a lot of steps. You just need to get used to the steps. and. Um, if you notice, notice the process I used, I started by setting up my little grid with my u and my u uh, primes, my v, my v prime. So in other words, the function, its derivative, same thing for the second function and its derivative. <clears throat> and then here at this point, I started using product rule. So that is you memorizing product rule, because product rule has a very simple um, matrix. It simply says u times 
the second derivative prime first or first derivative of that second function plus that second function times the derivative of the first function. And that's basically what you have here. Uh, uh. I don't understand why it, the part um, uh, never mind. Maybe if you you watch it again, it'll click click in. Uh, let's see when I do quotient rule and see how you feel. So let's go back. And let's review quotient rule because that's the next part. We can always do a session uh, during the weekend if you need, like while you do Pearson, or well, send me a question, whatever it takes. Yeah. So quotient rule says the second or the second um, function times the derivative of the first. And this matters as far as order because it's subtraction. The first function times the derivative of the second function. And this is written over the, the second function squared. So basically squared. The reason why I say first function, second function, I want you to remember that when we think about the first derivative rule, I'm looking at the derivative of two functions, one divided by another. So it's typically u of x divided by v of x. So when I say second function, I'm referring to the denominator. And so following this pattern, uh, I need you to write this down because this is gonna be essential to your understanding the second example that I'm about to do here. So go ahead, take a moment, write it down. And understand that we're looking at the, the quotient rule and how it, how it relates to the general power rule. So more chain rule examples are par part of this. So keep that in mind. And um, so here we go. See if I can get this off. The... All right, so here's a, a an example of what we're going to look at. So we're looking at the quotient rule. And the general power rule. So just be patient. This will come to you. If it doesn't come to you tonight, it doesn't mean it won't come to you ever. Just, just means you need to see the big picture. So I may need to highlight a little bit more. Maybe that'll help. Um, so this is example nine. And what they're asking us to do here is to find the first derivative of the function of the rational function, I should say, of 3x plus 2. And this is where the general power rule comes in, because I'm raising that to the seventh power. And this is divided by x minus 1. So remember, this is your u of x. This is your v of x. What I'm missing right now is what is the derivative of the u of x? What is the derivative of the v of x? If you do the same thing with the power rule, it doesn't change. It's the same thing. So our derivative for our u of x in this case is simply going to be 7 times the 3x plus 2. Nothing changed there. This is now minus 1, so 7 minus 1 is 6. Multiply times the derivative of 3x plus 2, which is just simply 3. 
The derivative of V of A, since V of A is simply going to be, basically in this case, the derivative is 1. It's that simple. So now if I use my, look at, look at my formula right here, right here. So the original function would start with, in this case, x minus 1 times the derivative of the u of x, which is 7 parentheses 3x plus 2 to the 6th power times 3. All of this is the first part right here. Right now, all I've done is this little part minus Again, I'm going to use brackets to separate it. This is simply going to be the 3x plus 2 to the 7th times the derivative of the, of the denominator, which is 1. And all of this is over that v of x, which is x minus 1, squared. If you can follow me as far as this is concerned, we're good so far. And I'm going to continue with doing a little distribution. I don't want to go too fast. Let me know if you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Do you notice now that I have a 3 here and a 7 here. So that's going to give me, at this moment, I'm going to use this to get 21 parentheses x minus 1 times the 3x plus 2 to the 6th power. Do you see that part of the equation? Minus. Mm -hmm. 1 times this power, which is the 3x plus 2 to the 7th, is just going to be 3x plus 2 to the 7th. And all of this is over x minus 1 squared. Now, just think of this, and this is where I, I don't want to lose er, uh, anybody. So pay attention right here. Okay, I'm going to highlight it in yellow, and I'm going to pretend that this is an x to the 6, some sort of x to the 6 and an x to the 7. Mathematically, x to the 6 goes into x to the 7. So I can call the 3x plus 2 to the 6 as a common denominator or a common uh, factor. So this is 3x plus 2 and to the sixth power. And what leaves me on this side, once I take this piece out, is the 21 times the x minus one minus only one power of the three x plus two. Because what is three x plus two to the one times three x plus two to the six? It's 3x plus 2 to the 7th, because remember, I'm distributing this. I'll literally multiply it out if I need to. Now, if I distribute the 21 and the x, so I'll multiply that there. I'll also multiply that exponent in here and in here. I end up with 3x plus 2 to the 6th times 21x minus 21 minus 3x minus 2. And yes, all of this is still over, in both cases, over the x minus 1 squared. That doesn't change. That's just the, den the denominator sitting there. Now, I can collect like terms. So 21 
minus 3x and negative 21 and negative 2. So this ends up being 3x plus 2 to the 6th power. And then this will be times 18x minus 23. And all of this over x minus 1 still squared. It's a lot to take in, isn't it? Would you like to try another one? That'd be great. Okay, let's try another one. Are you ready? Um, okay, so this is an example of find the derivative, so that they just say d of x, and then they give you the quotient, where you have 4x minus 1 to the third power divided by x plus 3. OK, one more time, let me remind you, it's the v times the first derivative of u minus u times the first derivative of v divided by v squared, if that helps you with the quotient rule, OK? I'll give you two or three minutes to see how you do. Let me know when you're ready.
So I'm just going to set it up because I assume you are at least here. Is this at least what you have? Yes. Yeah. So if you're, you're here, you're good. And um, at this point, um, I'm assuming we are going to consider three times four, four. And so the three times four will give you, do you have at least gotten to this point? Yes. No. No. Yes. Okay. And this just simplifies to be this. All over x minus or x plus three squared. So far so good? Yep. Well, it looks like it's common. I'll give you a hint with a yellow marker. 4x minus 1. Yeah. So I'm thinking that if I factor out 4x minus 1 squared, this is going to leave me in here 12 times x plus 3. And on this side, this is going to be minus. I just need one power of this because I already have two powers out here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in other words, if you think of this as x squared, how many times is x squared going to x cubed? That would be an easy way to look, think about it. All right. So um, what happens next? Wait, wait. Go. go ahead. Tell me what happened. Um, so you... Uh... Why is 4x minus 1 squared outside of the thing? Because it goes in here and it goes in here. Let me ask you a question. Look over here on this side. I'm going to write it in uh, blue. If I had 12x minus 3, x plus 3, whatever, and here I had some x squared, and this was minus some x cubed, isn't it true that x squared goes in here as well? Yeah. So it's common. So if I take out x squared, that would have 12 parentheses x plus 3, and then minus at least 1x, which is in essence what I've done here, because I'm taking out this power of 2 for the 4x minus 1, and in here, this is still 4x minus 1. I'm taking that into account. Okay. Uh, Make sense? Yeah, yeah. It makes sense now. So if we multiply 12 times x, 12 times 3, and the negative into the 4x and the 1, this becomes 4x minus 1 squared. And this is times 12x plus 36 minus 4x plus 1. And all of this is over the x plus 3 squared. Con consolidate all like terms, which is the next step. Well, in this case, it's going to give you 4x minus 1 squared. And this is times 12x minus 4x is 8x. 36 and 1 is 37. So this is plus 37. 
and this is still over x plus 3 squared. And this will be typically your final answer right here. If you watch this again, if it hasn't sunk in, it's gonna, I promise you. Uh, on the Pearson, do you have to do the brackets? I don't know what those things are called. They're gonna um, they're gonna ask you a specific format and they'll provide you with the bracket if that's what they want. Okay. So I wouldn't fret about it too much. But if you hit a snag, you can always send me a question and I keep I keep the um the um show me an example open all the time so that you can always you know revert back to an example so as we finish today uh, we're going to learn a lot of really quick lessons or parts here so let me uh close this and change pages okay so this is uh section four four in the book and this is all about derivatives of exponential functions so we're looking at derivatives of exponential functions. There are a lot of rules here. So please listen carefully to these rules because they're going to they're going to evolve as we discuss them. So one of the first things that I'm going to tell you is one of the easiest derivatives to remember will be the derivative of e of x because the derivative of e of x is, guess what, e of x. I proved it um, with a class that I had for a four-hour stint with Excel. If you plug in values for Excel, you find that it co continuously, as you reach zero, you end up with the same value. A proof of it is if I do the derivative with limit as h approaches zero, and I look at it as e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. As I evolve this, I want you to remember when you add exponents because you're multiplying their bases, right? So the limit as h approaches zero of this function is really e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x. And this is still all over h. So technically, I can factor out e to the x. If I factor out e to the x, I end up with e to the h minus 1 all over h as h approaches 0. So if h is approaching 0, you end up with e to, uh, to the 0 minus 1 over 0. Well, that's 0. That just cancels out the 1 or 0. So e to the x is the only explanation. <clears throat> if I show you a different kind of derivative, but almost similar, is this one. If I have the derivative of a function, and let's call this a to the x. So if this function is a to the x, that derivative, so the d over dx of a to the x, is equivalent to the natural log of a times a d d x. So let's do some examples. So you see how this will, this it's more like at this point, like a pattern. Just remember the pattern and you'll start to catch on why. It goes back to something simple. It's usually something so explicative, like uh, a straight line. It's a vertical line. It's, it has a, an undefined slope. So of course it's not differ differentiable or it's uh, jagged. If it's not a smooth curve, it's not differentiable. Those little things you start to pick up. So let me give you example A, and I'm going to say to you, if some function f of t is equal to t, e to the t, what's its first derivative? 
the first derivative of t in this case is simply e to the t. No change, just like a base e. It is what it is. If y is equal to the square root of 3, e to the x, what is the derivative of this function? What is the first derivative? It's simply going to be the square root of the 3, e to the x. Practically identical. Is e to x under ra the radical sign? Nope, nope. No, these are separate. So it's a coefficient. The square root of three is a coefficient. Um, okay, in example C, if I have g of x, and that is equivalent to three to the x, this goes with this, the second uh, example I showed you, which its first derivative is going to be the natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. And again, these are patterned. I would just remember them. It is what it is. It's one of those proofs. The fourth example I'm going to share with you is if you have some function h of t. And I say to you, the equation is 7 times 5 to the t, then the first derivative is simply going to be 7 times the natural log of 5 times 5 to the t. And again, these are derivatives. They're constants. They're, they're patterned. So those are four really good examples of that. Let me see if I can get you another set of examples. Oh yeah, I definitely want to show you these. Okay, so these next examples, this, this is like, if I said to you, I'm looking for derivatives of functions So let's say the function is a to the g of x. Um, and let's do an example also of e to the g of x. What are they going to look like? So for example, if I do a, let's do a first derivative given a to the g of x. And this is going to become the natural log of a. And then this is times the g of x itself. a raised to the g of x. a raised, I wrote this really nasty. Hold on a second. Let me rewrite this. This will be a times a raised to the g of x. I'm going to change the color again. Times the derivative of g of x. And I'll do a couple of examples of that too. Just bear with me. I want to show you the, the um, formulas first. So we're going to do also the and e of, e of g of x. So if I have the first derivative of e raised to the g of x, This pattern will, will show e raised to the g of x without a change times the first derivative of g of x. So let's do let's do some examples of that of this. So this is like its own little section of notes. So if I said to you as a derivative, I said find or as a, an example, find the derivative of each function. So in this case, I'm going to start with example A. 
where I said y is equal to e raised to the 5x. Now remember, in this case, your g is equal to, or g of x is equal to 5x, and that first derivative is equal to 5. So if you remember that, then that means that that answer will be 5 e to the 5x. Okay, let's look at example B. I'm giving you in this one, uh, y is equal to 10 e, and the e is raised to the 3x squared. So if we follow the steps, this is going to end up being 60 x e raised to the 3x squared. So remember, this is 10 times e raised to the 3x squared. And the derivative of 3x squared is simply 6x. That's why this is your answer. Of another example, example C. In example C, we have y is equal to 8 times 10 raised to the 1 over t. So think about it. What is the derivative of the 1 over t? And there's no e, so this is a natural log involved. So this has to be the derivative, and I'm just going to write it out, and you're going to talk about it with me, of dy over dx, or dt in this case, um, of 8 times the natural log of 10 times the 10 to the 1 over t times the negative 1 over t squared. Remember, the 1 over t, that has to become t to the negative 1. And if you multiply, you get negative t to the negative 2. That's why negative 1 over t squared. Okay, and all of this over t squared. So final answer uh, actually is going to end here, just like that. So you're going to have plenty of those to practice on um, on Pearson. Now there is a, one last concept and I'm, I'm done for the night. That is the product rule. With exponential functions. Okay, and again, this also has a patterned repeti repetition I want you to follow. So let me just do a few of those examples. I know you must be tired by now. So I'm going to give you example A, which is f of x is equal to x to the fifth times e raised to the 2x. So you have product rule. Obviously, there's a power a product here. So again, using those those um, patterns that I talked about, you find the first derivative of the product rule. 
by using the first term, x to the fifth, times the derivative of this, which is going to be 2 e to the 2x plus e to the 2x and then this derivative of 5x to the fourth. All right, and so we distribute. We end up with 2x to the fifth e to the 2x plus 5x to the fourth e to the 2x. If you notice, the e to the 2x and the x to the fourth are common. So if I have x to the fourth, I could take that out, and e to the 2x, I can take that out. Because the x to the fourth, e to the 2x happens in both. What you're left with this side is 2x, and what you're left with this side is 5. And so this is your first derivative for this function. OK. I have a quotient rule example. I want to finish as well. Let me do a quotient rule with you. This is quotient rule. And this is with exponential functions. And so um, again, they're giving you some h of x And they're giving us, um, let's call it f of x. And this is equal to e to the 5x. And this is over 3x minus 1. And they want to simply to find the first derivative. OK. So using the quotient rule, if you recall, this will be 3x minus 1 times the derivative of e to the 5x, which is basically 5 times e to the 5x minus e to the 5x times 3. And all of this is over 3x minus 1 squared. And so using a little bit of... Um, mental math here, if I distribute, I'm going to get 15 x e to the 5x minus 5 e raised to the 5x minus 3e to the 5x, and all of this over the denominator, 3x minus 1 squared. So I combine like terms, which if I do that, I end up with 15xe to the 5x minus 8 e to the 5x, and all of this over 3x minus 1 squared. You can factor further, I know. <laughs> so if you took that first derivative, you would take out e to the 5x, and you would multiply this by 15x minus 8. And again, all of this over 3x minus 1 squared. OK, that is a lot to chew on for tonight. I'm going to stop here. My suggestion is, like I said, take your time. Let me stop the recording so we don't um, waste it. Let me stop the recording.